This talk is about a project that I completed earlier this year under Kirk Sudhalter's supervision. The context is image restoration or de-blurring images that have somehow been corrupted. In the example here, the top is the true image, the bottom left is the same image after Gaussian blur, and the bottom right is a reconstruction. This kind of a problem has applications in astronomy, tomography, medical imaging. To model this kind of situation, we consider the blurring as a matrix acting on a vector of pixels. So X is the true image and B is the blurred image. This problem is ill-posed, so simply applying the inverse to both sides is not a feasible approach. Also, the right-hand side is usually contaminated by some small amount of noise. Taking this into account, the big picture is that we now want to use results from analysis to teach a computer how to find a good approximation of the true image. Now, results from analysis are based on a continuous analogue of this problem. Luckily for us, all of the important features of the continuous world are reflected meaningfully in the discrete setting. So instead of solving directly, we're focusing on iterative methods and not just any. We want methods that have regularizing properties. This means that we can avoid magnifying the distorting effects of noise if we limit how well we fit our approximation to the data. The crux of this project is that we look at two particular iterative methods and we find an interesting connection between them. In order to explain that, I need to mention their foundation, CG. I don't have time for details about CG, but the following two points are important. It applies where the matrix is symmetric positive definite, and it generates a basis for this Krylov subspace, which you can think of as polynomials in M multiplied with W. So method one is CGNE, where we apply CG to the normal equations. A very important result of the project is that CGNE does indeed have regularizing properties. Method 2, Tikhonov regularization, takes a different approach, seeking to minimize this expression for some chosen positive sigma. Conveniently, it turns out that we can use Lagrange multipliers to reduce to this problem, which looks very much like the normal equations, just shifted by a constant. Now comes the fun part, which is in finding that interesting connection. It's actually based on a nice property of Krylov subspaces, which is that they are invariant under a shift by a constant. In particular, this invariance means that CGNE and CGT generate the same Krylov subspace. It turns out that this invariance is all we need to come up with a concrete link between the iterates of the two methods. This equation is the culmination of the project. On the left, we have the mth iterate of CGNE, and on the right, XM sigma denotes the mth iterate of CGT with parameter sigma. Obviously, many terms in this expression are meaningless without fuller context, but on a high level, it's actually enough to pique our curiosity to notice that xm is the sum of a scalar multiple of xm sigma, with some additional term added on the end. Even this alone allows us to play around an experiment, asking questions like, as m increases or sigma changes, what happens to this scaling factor or the term added on the end? This link is useful because it potentially allows us to transfer our understanding of one method over to the other. That's all from me. Thanks for listening.